just on the way to the Haram. SubhanAllah, check this out. It's a full moon. SubhanAllah. Pitch black night, cloudy night a little bit. But look at that, a full moon. Absolutely stunning, SubhanAllah. Totally reminds me of the time where the Prophet and the companion were sitting together. And the companion came to a conclusion after looking at the bright moon and looking at Rasulullah comparing both beauties and then coming to the conclusion that Rasulullah is most beautiful, subhanAllah. Before I go to the Haram, I'm just going to grab some tasbis because I've got some money left over from. Somebody gave some money, actually sorry, my mother gave some money So inshallah I'm going to grab some tasbis and hand them out Inshallah Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh This is how to be a swab jaw to the max This is not for the, purpose, for the purpose of showing off This is for To inspire others to do good as well inshallah So got a whole bag of the digital tasbis Two real each so I'm just going to hand them out just now Inshallah azawajal So this is the last day in Medina Manawara. Trying to stay a bit positive, but it's hard. So um, just read Juma, just on the rooftop, and as you can see, I made a schoolboy error. I uh, forgot my sunglasses in the hotel, so I'm like walking around like that. <laughs> so I'm Allah. So I'm just gonna just walk around and see what's what. So I just wanted to really make this video just to share some tips and advice for Umrah. So first of all, when you the main thing behind every action, again, it all ties back to the hadith is your intention. What's your intention behind the whole? <coughs> so. So the first thing you need to do for Umrah the first thing I would advise is make your firm intention Make a firm intention that you're booking for Umrah and you're doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. First of all, praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most high, the most merciful. Peace and blessings upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Blessed companions and his blessed family. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa alayhi wa sallam. Salatu wa salamu alayki ya Rasulullah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa alayhi wa sallam. I am sent outside the Haram in Medina. Um, just read Maghrib Namaz and just waiting for Isha. So I thought I'd make this video just to share some tips and advice for Umrah. So if you're thinking you know, about coming to Umrah for the first time or it is your first time or you've been before but it's been like five, six years since you've been and you want to brush up on or you get some tips or advice on Umrah. So I thought I'd make a video of you guys. So I'll show you a quick round of what this works. I'm just sitting here. That's the green dome of uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He's right there, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Abu Bakr radiallahu taala anhu and Umar ibn Al Khattab radiallahu taala anhu are all there. This is amazing feeling. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa laa ilaha Subhanallah. Look at that. That's my view right now. So if you see me looking over there or over there, you know what I'm looking at. Subhanallah, the green dome. So right. So tip number one would be intention whatever you do you have to make an intention a pure intention of why you're coming to Umrah why you're coming to the Hajj intention you know maybe to please Allah to follow the way of Rasulullah so to better yourself so really take some time out and think you know what, what is my real purpose of going to Umrah what's my intention behind it Am I going so, you know, so I'm going because my father or my mother is dragging me or my wife or my husband is dragging me or am I going for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so renew your intention at the start and make intention that you're going to do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you're going to do it according to this Quran and Sunnah and you're going to go to visit, you know, Makkah and Medina um, again, I would say when you obviously make your intention um, Book your hotels, you know, look for the packages. Um, again, I would say stick to eight hall, protected, and Hajj and uh, Umrah, the well, Hajj ministry registered as well. So it's very important that you travel with these two, um, uh, travel agent with these two on there, um, because God forbid if something does happen, you know, um, you want to make sure you, know, you are protected. Um, a lot of fraud out there, a lot, a lot of fraud out there. There was, um, there was a family that I know who came from the UK and they were here, here at the same time as that, uh, me and my family as well. And what happened was they paid for a hotel, um, but the hotel that they were promised, they didn't get that. They were actually um, checked into another hotel um, by the agent. So they paid for a, a five star they were put into a three star so again you have to watch these things as well because you never know what can happen um, when it comes to these things so make sure you're all protected you go with the travel agent who is uh, reputable you know who has previous experience or you know go with somebody who you think you know it's it's you know my cousin or my friend has been with them I want to go with them um, you know fast forward pack light um, when you're when the days are coming up I would say you know pack light pack some nice clothes and um, some thobes if you have them if not then again you can buy them from here not to worry pack light and you know take your travel adapters with you the whole lot um, inshallah my video for what to take with you will be coming up as well inshallah um, take a string bag with you um, as you can see I've got one here and I've got my side bag here as well so um, definitely take them with you they'll come in use as well um, I would say for ihram purposes, put your ihram on after security. Because what happened was, um, well, what happened with, with myself and the family was after we checked in at Heathrow, uh, we, yeah, after we checked in at Heathrow, we went through security and we had, 
Yeah, so we went through security and after we checked, uh, after we checked in, we went through security, we went to the toilets and changed into a haram, got on the plane, made mania, and after that, you know, uh, slept until Mikat, um, passed the Mikat, already had made my intention about half an hour after lift off, um, and that's it. Um, so I would say, make your niya about half an hour after lift off, but make sure you're in a haram um, after security. So it's much easier that way as well. Um, once you land at Jeddah, I would say have a lot, a lot of patience. A lot of patience is required. Immigration took us about an hour and a half just standing there. It wasn't even Hajj time. So um, a lot of patience required at Jeddah airport. Just take your time. You know, it is, you know, you just stand there for ages in the queue. Have, have a lot of sabr and patience at Jeddah airport because you, you definitely need it. Um, once you get through immigration, again, you may have problems with the driver. We had a, we had a problem with the driver. Again, we had to wait an hour on the driver. Um, again, have sabr when it comes to that. Make sure you know, you're organised with transport as well. You got the number. For the Saudi SIM, it took us a long time getting a proper Saudi SIM from um, Jeddah airport. Because what happened was we went to each kind of, you know, there's STC, there's Mobile, there's Zane. So we went to different mobile operators and we asked them for a SIM card and they didn't have any. They said service down, service down, whatever that meant. So we, I didn't get a SIM card in the airport. So if there's cleaners offering you a SIM card, which they did to me, they offered me a SIM card, I turned it down, which now I, well, I regretted afterwards. So if there's a cleaner offering you a SIM card for 30 reals, usually there's a 25 real credit in it, take the SIM card, now make sure it's working in your phone, and that way you can contact your driver and things like that as well. Because we had a lot of families um, in the airport who had problems getting SIM cards and had to phone through their UK mobile to their Saudi driver to make sure they get transport. Um, again, once you get on the transport from Jeddah to Makkah, it may be a bit of a delay, so again, have sabr on that. When you get to Makkah, um, relax, check into your hotel, you know, take your time. If it's your first Umrah, revise your book, you know, go to your hotel, just relax and um, rest. That's the main thing because you need all your energy for the Umrah. Just relax, um, sleep for a couple hours. Um, if you're in the clock tower or a hotel, like a four or five star, depending on what you go for, um, that's close to the harm, you may have a harm view. Um, like my wife, uh, she had a harm view in her room um, with uh, her mother and her auntie. And we went to see it, it was pretty funny. We went to see it, me and my brother in law, and we opened the, um, we, we drew the curtains like that, and we seen the Kaaba uh, from the room. And I was, uh, you know, I was taken back. I was like, wow, that's my first sight. So do I make a dua or do I not? So I just do there making a dua. So be careful if you get a harm view. Uh, if you're in Swiss hotel, ask for a harm view. But again, make sure you make your dua upon the first sight of the Kaaba. I would recommend go down and see the Kaaba for yourself. When you get into the masjid um, for your Umrah, again, follow your books, um, go into the masjid, keep your eyes down, look at the Kaaba. And when you see it, you'll be shocked. Like, wow. When you see the Kaaba, move to the side. Take your time and make dua. Make as much dua as you want. One dua that an Imam told me would be, Oh Allah, accept my duas from now on. Or, well, from now, going forward. So, um, one dua is accepted, inshallah, Allah will accept the rest of them as well. Because Allah is most merciful, Allah is most Rahim. Um, so, that's that. Um, again, during Tawaf, take your time. If it's a bit, I would say avoid doing Umrah, you know, after Zuhur or after Asr. Uh, I would say do it after Maghrib, do it after uh, Isha, probably after Isha, because between Maghrib and Isha, there's not much time. A lot of people stay there, um, just like me, like I'm here. So just take your time, do your Tawaf, you know, go to Muntazam, make Tawaf. Do, if you're in a Haram, don't touch the Kaaba, because the Kaaba, Kaaba has got fragrance on it, it's got Ittar on it, so um, you don't want that on your uh, ihram. Um, again, take your time when you're doing du'af. If you were with family, with elderly, again, one tip would be have a meeting point. Make sure you have a meeting point because it's very, very important. If you get lost, like you don't, whatever you do, do not meet under the green light because that is such a schoolboy error. And me and my family, what we did was 
we said we'll meet under the green light, just like the other 50,000 people said that they would be under the green light to their families. So don't meet under the green light, meet somewhere else, uh, a quiet place, maybe you know, Safa Marwa, Zamzam area, depending on where you are. Um, once you do your tawaf, you do your two nafal, remember the two nafal, you can't do any nafal between Asr and Maghrib, um, so try to avoid that time if possible. Um, we got stuck, so we had to do tawaf and then the two nafal of tawaf, you had to do it after Maghrib. Uh, we did our say. Say is probably the hardest part of Umrah in my experience because it's very tough on the heels, very tough on the feet. But again, it's for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, again, take your time when you do Umrah, especially if it's first, for your first Umrah. You, I know you've got the energy, etc. But just take your time, do your say, and keep doing the zikr of Allah. Keep sending the root upon the most um, beautiful creation um, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet. And once you do your Umrah, go back to your hotel, freshen up, relax, change your clothes and um, enjoy yourself. And when you're in Mecca, try to go through the basement if possible um, because you get to through to the Haram, you know. Um, enjoy yourself as much as you can, um, spread as much Salaam as possible, you know, say Salaam to everybody, even people you don't know. Uh, inshallah, I'll make the Medina video um, at the airport, inshallah. Because my battery is running, you know, my memory card is running low. So, fish your eyes on this beast. Salatu wassalamu alayka ya Rasulullah wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Habib Allah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammadan wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa alayka sallam. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. It's approximately half past 11. Friday um, going to say my last salam to the best of creation creation sallallahu alayhi wa sallam oh man seriously I hate this feeling I don't like it I'm glad I have this feeling alhamdulillah but I don't like saying bye it's, it's just deja vu from like less than, less than six months ago. The last uh, video I put on YouTube was this, you know, saying bye. I don't like it, but it's got to be done. I was just talking to my wife there and I was just saying to her that all good things come to an end. And she, say, she was just telling me to be positive. And she was saying that, you know, think positive because the thing is that imagine the Sahaba may be pleased with them you know when they left Medina Munawwara you know they were motivated they must have been so so depressed they must have been so sad subhanallah so think about the, the the blessed companions of Rasulullah they must have been sad. They must have been heartbroken to leave their beloved. Our love with Rasulullah is it's, it's nothing compared to the Sahaba's love for Rasulullah. But just kind of that positivity, that thought comes in your head that you know what, the Sahabas had more love than we do for Rasulullah so they left and migrated on the other side of the world for Allah's sake so they can give da'wah so they can strengthen their iman they can work religiously Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar so it kind of motivates me to to go back and, and do the best I can not just for myself, not just for my family but for the rest of mankind inshallah but seriously, this feeling is not good. This feeling is... I don't know what it is, inshallah. Ya Allah, Akbar, Allah. This moon has always been... It's been a clear night. And this moon... It's always reminded me of the same story. Same story. Companion and Rasulullah sitting together. 
pitch black night and the moon is like that. You can see the, the moon is like bright. And the thing is that in terms of and the Sahaba looks at Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he looks at the moon. He looks at Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he looks at the moon. He looks at Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he looks at the moon. And he comes to a conclusion that he comes to a conclusion that the best of creation Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has more Noor on his face than the moon. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah. Allah. Subhanallah. Just wanted to share some Medina tips with you guys. When you come into Medina, as soon as you enter, as soon as you leave Makkah for Medina, you'll have the sorrow for leaving Makkah. But think you're going to the place of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa you go to visit the greatest creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, obviously you'll feel that sorrow, but have in your heart that you're going to see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The journey, again, have sabr, because it took us about six and a half hours to get to Medina. Be patient with the driver, be patient when you're coming from Makkah to Medina, because it is a tough journey probably the bumpiest journey ever so hold on and hold on to your luggage as well so as soon as you enter Medina sorry uh, on the way from Makkah to Medina continuously read the rules of Salaam upon Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and also I would advise listen to some nasheeds or a lecture to bring your iPad or your mobile phone listen to a lecture upon the seed of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or the love of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so that Iman gets a little bit boost you know the love it's a little bit boost so when you're here you know the importance of it last thing you want to do is come here and feel kind of empty feel lost so just use that as a little kickstart inshallah and also as soon as you enter Medina check in rest for a bit if you want and I advise having a shower getting you know attar on putting a mama or a topi on whatever and go straight to see beloved as soon as you enter the masjid read to nafal of you know the, the welcome of the masjid tahitul masjid and then go to see beloved please 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 i beg of you do not take your do not take pictures do not waste time taking pictures of the golden gate of the jali mubarak i see people coming and spending time waiting in line so much to say salam to Rasulullah and what they do is they take a picture right in front of him right where you're supposed to say salam they take a picture take a selfie come on guys seriously and it annoys me so much but, but please don't do that because you'll be in front of Rasulullah and the last thing you want to do is waste your time and take a picture of a golden gate when you're supposed to be in front of the most beloved subhanallah so pictures I would say Take some pictures or videos, but keep it outside the masjid, like this. Salatu wassalamu alaykum ya Rasulullah. Wa ala alaykum sahbik ya Habibullah. Don't, don't waste your time. And take stupid photos and, you know, take time and Waste your time in front of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Bakr, as the Umar Raziyallahu Ta'ala Anhu. Don't do that, please. For the sake of Allah, don't do that. And I'll also, when you're in Medina, you will get tired, so throughout your stay in Medina, sleep as, as much as you can. Rest, get some rest in between the salahs. Good time to rest, probably after Fajr, or between Zuhr and Asr, about three hours, so catch up on your sleep, inshallah. And also, I would say, in terms of um, another tip, would be try to say salam as much as possible. You know, between Maghrib and Isha, it's packed, between Isha as well. Take your time, don't push anybody, you know, be calm, be humble. Remember where you are, you're in the court of Rasulullah. 
subhanallah, time is getting closer. In Medina, shop as much as you want. You know, shop as much as you want. Buy as much as you want. Be, and when you're in the streets of Medina as well, don't spit in the streets of Medina. Don't throw rubbish in the streets of Medina. There's so many people spitting and throwing rubbish in the streets of Medina. You don't, you know what? It's the streets of Rasulullah, so that's where he walked. So don't, don't, don't do that. I would not advise that. I would say, you know what? Be humble, be extra careful when you're in Medina. This is the city of the Beloved and Allah's favourite city. So he has his Beloved So I would say, you know, these are just overall kind of tips for Medina. Inshallah, if I remember other tips, I will definitely post up along with this video, Inshallah. So I'm here at the Beloved's resting place. Inshallah, I'm going to say salam to them. Final moment, leaving Medina Sharif, man. This is it, this is the last moment. May Allah accept us being here. May Allah forgive us all of our sins. I love you, Ya Rasulullah. I love you so much. Semi-final salams and it was tough but subhanAllah Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much for bringing us here um, Peace and blessings for Rasulullah subhanahu wa ta'ala Bless the family families We are in uh, airport, we are just checking in Alhamdulillah There is no queue as you can see, there is nobody here So we are just checking in just now and going to get flights from Medina to Jeddah and then go to check in from Jeddah to again Jeddah and then go to Heathrow. Jeddah airport from Medina. Nice flight, 40 minutes, that's all. So had to grab our luggage as you can see there. So we just grabbed our luggage and um, you probably can't hear me because of all this but grabbed our luggage and just wait to go to from one terminal to another and check in again for our British English flight. So the time is so time is uh, 25 to 7. So, I'm going to show you the Zamzam. Al Medina Al Manawar. Families and special needs passengers kindly proceed to gate number 4 for boarding. Thank you. Have a nice flight. One tip would be take care of your Zamzam. I was thinking to put, you know, rope around it, but it's a bad idea because the more rope you put around it, it will happen. There. So take care when you're uh, doing the same thing as well.
nature's beauty dazzles the mind, knowing everything comes of a plane. on you, the Lord Most High. Allahumma bi Allah 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 Arrived at London Heathrow. I just got to play now, so just gonna go get our stuff and then go. It's been emotional, man. It's been emotional. This is how the Zom Zom has arrived. All battered. <coughs> Still okay. So one tip would be to you can get it like these kind of zombies up as well, like these ones. Well that's what you usually get as well. So I arrived back at in the UK. This is terminal five. I feel so weird being back man. I feel so so weird being back. I don't wanna I just feel like don't stay in here. I just feel like Going back. I want to go back. I want to go back. Take me back to somebody. So, this is it. Alhamdulillah. Back in Terminal 5, inshallah. Back to Scotland tomorrow. Back on work on Tuesday. Back to life. Just got to keep myself more in. Make dua for me, inshallah. Allah keeps me steadfast on the deen. Yeah, Allah help me. It's, it's, I, hate the, I hate the feeling coming back, especially from the Holy Lands, I hate the feeling. Ya Allah, take me back there, take me back there. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sallam.